Good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, indeed, Nora, for that very fulsome introduction. There's a few things there you said about the Department of Justice. I'd prefer it if you hadn't said. <laughs> Waking up and those unexpected things, but we all know that that is true. Um, I'm very pleased and honoured, indeed, to have been invited to come along here this evening uh, to do the official launch of a wonderful, authoritative book, Policing in Northern Ireland, Delivering the New Beginning, and of course, I'd like to begin by congratulating uh, both Desmond and Robin uh, for the huge amount of work uh, that you have done. You're uniquely placed uh, to address the issues in this book, having been first-hand witnesses to everything that happened. And I want to thank you for the care and the detail uh, that is here, which provides uh, very valuable lessons, I think, uh, for us and indeed for the entire country. We're all in this room, and I'm delighted to see so many uh, former colleagues uh, from the Dáil and Senate here, whom uh, uh, Nora has welcomed, and so many representatives from across the justice system, whom I've had the pleasure uh, of working with uh, since I have been honoured with this position uh, since May of last year. It's been, uh, I have to say, a real uh, honour and pleasure for me to have the opportunity uh, to work um, as Nora has said, in a department that is so, cent so central and so fundamental uh, to our democracy, uh, so critical and has played such a critical role uh, in our history, uh, maintaining our, our democracy and securing peace and working with all those of you uh, who work to the very best ideals of justice uh, in this country. Everybody in this room is very familiar with the historic achievement of peace, in Northern Ireland, with the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in April 98, and the subsequent political and social developments in Northern Ireland, which makes it a very different place today than it was in 1998 and in the years before then. A central element in the framework that underlies that new political departure in Northern Ireland was a new dispensation in policing, which is clearly articulated within the pages of this book. The Independent Commission on Policing for Northern Ireland, better known to us as the Patent Commission, was established to carry out a fundamental review of policing in Northern Ireland. It began its work in June 98, and following its examination of the very many and complex issues at hand, including a very extensive public consultation exercise, the report was produced in 1999. I think it is fair to say that at the time, responses to the Patent Report and its proposals and to the subsequent legislation from across the political spectrum in Northern Ireland were not entirely positive. That said, given the political context and given the scale and nature of the changes that were proposed, a mixed response was hardly unexpected. Among the critical policing issues in Northern Ireland that were identified in the proposals for reform were the need to develop and promote community confidence in the police and community engaging with policing. And indeed, the story that's told here is, as I said, it is inspirational. The need for the composition of the police services to better reflect the makeup of the community that it serves. The need to uphold human rights, particularly in the challenging circumstances of civil unrest and terrorism. And the need for robust and independent mechanisms for holding a police service to account, while also providing the necessary supports it requires. In large measure, these and many other aspects of the reform are not unique to Northern Ireland. To greater or lesser degrees, depending on circumstances, they characterise requirements for proper policing in any jurisdiction. Also important were the considerations of dealing with the legacy of the violence of the Troubles in Northern Ireland. While much has been done in this regard, these considerations continue to be a concern and efforts to address them are now finding expression in the provisions of the Stormont House Agreement established in December last year. The Stormont House Agreement was a hard-won achievement and I pay tribute to all that were involved in the process, not least the political parties in the Assembly who, with the support of the government, stuck at the task and had the courage to force agreement, to forge agreement. The mechanisms to deal with the past are welcome elements of the overall agreement and are now the subject of ongoing intensive implementation work. For its part, the Irish government will continue to play its part in giving effect to the agreement and is fully committed to its delivery. As we know, in November 2001, the police service of Northern Ireland became a reality. 
And alongside the PSNI came a new supporting framework of accountability and oversight in the form of the Northern Ireland Policing Board and the Police Ombudsman's Office. This was, in no uncertain terms, a new beginning. And the intervening years have seen very significant political developments in Northern Ireland and at the same time, and closely linked to them, this steady and successful implementation of the policing reform process documented here. The two authors of the book being launched this evening are really, as I've already said, very well placed to elaborate on that. Of course, I do want to say that it is deeply unfortunate that despite the very great progress made in Northern Ireland in recent years, there remains a small minority in this island who choose not to respect the democratic will, nor to accept the course of history. These groups still pose a real and persistent security threat, and of course, the women and men of the police service, north and south, stand in the front line against that threat. And I do believe it bears repeating again and again. And they do have our continued support and thanks for the work that they do in this regard. Combating terrorism remains a high priority for the government and for the Garda Shikona. The Gardaí work hand-in-hand hand with the PSNI on a daily basis in countering this threat and in facing many other common challenges that crime presents north and south. The words of a former Garda commissioner here today, Faulkner Murphy, bear repeating, who described the Garda PNSI relationship by saying, our uniforms may be of a different colour, but they are made from the same cloth. The two police services on this island share a common goal of seeking to protect life and to ensure community safety for all communities on this island. Those who seek to challenge that aim at violence will only increase the strong, shared resolve, obvious day in, day out, north and south, to achieve it. Of course, the reforming of uh, policing is as topical an agenda item here as anywhere else. And obviously we have a, a far-reaching programme of reform, uh, which uh, Nora has referenced, including the establishment of the new independent policing authority. We've published the scheme and uh, the drafting of the bill is underway and that is a priority. And uh, obviously I'd be looking for a lot of support in relation to the establishment of that. And I see Josephine Feely here today, who is the uh, chair of that new police authority and uh, Josephine and the Commissioner Noreen, uh, who's also here today, uh, will be working uh, very closely with me uh, in the establishment of that important uh, new initiative. Clearly, what we have to do and can learn much, I believe, uh, from this work we are discussing here today, uh, the intensive examination of the policing oversight arrangements in operation in other jurisdictions will guide us. While there were very particular circumstances outlined here surrounding policing in the north, which led to the need for the establishment of the, of the policing board, obviously we're grateful to be able to learn lessons from its operation. And I think that's really important for us. So we can uh, learn from those uh, experiences, no question of that, about that. This departure will bring about one of the most fundamental changes in governance arrangements for the Garda Shikona since its foundation. I'm delighted, as I say, uh, that we are underway uh, in terms of uh, the establishment of that board. The work has started and we will continue to have very close interaction with the Northern Ireland Policing Board. It's a complex proposition, but it's a key part of the programme of reforms aimed at ensuring continuing confidence in the work of Ungardi Shikona and at supporting, as I've said already, the women and men of the Gardaí in the work that they do on our behalf uh, every day. The policing transition, we can see uh, from the work uh, here uh, tonight, policing in Northern Ireland, uh, we can see that it hasn't always been easy. And I know that Desmond and Robin uh, can elaborate on that for you uh, with a very uh, seasoned testimony of their own direct experience. I want to pay tribute to them both uh, for their work over many years, uh, for their persistence for their dedication, for their commitment in supporting, steering, and I am sure at times steadying the course of policing reform in Northern Ireland, which they tell us about in this publication. Certainly, they have made a huge personal investment in that, and I think it is that personal investment which they have made 
that makes this book and the insights and lessons that it offers in the reform of policing essential reading. I want to thank them sincerely uh, for the work uh, that they have done over many years, uh, which has made such a contribution to our peace and security, which has made such a contribution on this island. As I've said already, I believe it has been inspirational and worthy of the most detailed study, and it gives me great pleasure to have been invited along here this evening to launch this publication and to thank you for all of the work that you have done, and not just for doing the work, but for writing about it, for telling us about it, so that we can continue uh, to learn the lessons. Uh, well done. And sincere congratulations to both of you and sincere thanks to both of you for all of that. Thank you. Thank you.